Hi Ugandans, today I have a story for you. I want to tell you how I grew my 30 goats into the hundreds of goats you see on our farm today. Please, if you are somewhere there, sit down and I tell you about this story of how I grew my 30 goats into a big herd it is now. Hi, once again, I'm Grace Boji from Boji Farms. If you are new on our channel, please subscribe and also don't forget to leave us a comment. Today it is story time and here is my story how I grew the 30 goats into the many goats you see now. Uh, when we are starting every business, it always starts with an idea. I for one, I had an idea, but I had no capital. I had the zeal, I had the will, I had the passion. But it's an idea that kept me going, that I dreamt of executing one day. When I got the idea to farm goats, honestly speaking, I didn't know what type of goats I was going to farm, or what breed and for what purpose. I didn't know. But my push was for me to start. So when I started, in the beginning I first sold a few goats for slaughter. I would bring them to Kampala and others I would sell them for breeding purposes. But eventually I realized I earn a little profit from breeding goats than when I sell goats for slaughter. I'm not saying that goats for slaughter don't have a profit, but the, their market has, the market or the supply chain has a lot of dynamics. Basically dealing with, uh, it was, it, uh, slaughter is an informal market. You deal with a lot of, uh, should I say illiterates, that they don't know, they always underlook your effort vis-a-vis -vis what you have brought for them. For example, when, I would, um, when I, br I would bring them the local goods to the market, I for specifically used to take to Chitintale market, the butchers of Chitintale market, I would take them there, I would take my goods there. They would tell, yeah, uh, today the customers don't want meat from local goods. They want meat from exotic goods. And then the, the other week, you bring a few locals, and then you bring exotic goats. And then they will tell you, ah, the local goats weigh less. You should bring exotic goats. So basically they were confusing. And I, for one, I realized I could not go for that. And I settled for specifically breeding goats. And that is where I went up to now. So my startup, I asked for my MZE for piece of land where to farm from and he gave me a number of excuses because he feared, like all dads, he feared for me. But I told him, Dad, I want to try it out. If I fail, I will come back and let you know. And here I came to his land and I started with my 30 goods. The start was not easy. I did not have enough capital. I started with uh, roughly $1,200, that is, uh, by then it was fi 5 million, 5 million UGX. And uh, I did the construction, what it takes, and I also sourced for the 30 goats from the, from the villages around the farm. So number one is to start. You have an idea. You don't know where to, what to do. You are fearing you don't have enough capital. Here I started with 5 million shillings and I made it happen. So after you have started, give the project time. Project yet I go with the, give the project time. Don't leave it and start and then you leave it to outsiders or your relatives or somebody else. Unless you really have enough resources with... Um, an excellent team at the farm to be your eyes on while you are away. I, for one, I didn't have that luxury and I still had a job in Kampala. So every weekend, I made sure I came back to the farm. That even the few weekends I would miss, 
at least I would make sure I pay a boda boda guy, a motorcycle rider, these guys who drive uh, motorcycles. I would send him back to the farm to come and cross check for me what is happening. I've always retold my story. My beginning years were not so easy. I lost a number of babies, but I didn't give up. No, I didn't give up. So the, the next, uh, next part uh, is for you to ensure that in your herd, assuming, I, okay, I started with 30 goats, observe them, look out for them, see what capacity they can give you, and within uh, around uh, six months, some of them had started giving birth. So when they started giving birth, I started looking forward to the babies, but of course some babies used to die. But through that stage, I learned a lot of lessons. Number one, this is where the workers, uh, the workers would live. Sometimes the workers are not there. Sometimes they work when you are, they would not work because you are not around, but I persevered. So the observ observation bit is where you start looking at your heart and see which goats should I get out of my herd? Which goats should I keep out? Here is the magic. From the observation, from six months up to like one year and a half, you can easily tell among your few goats that this goat I'm going to keep, this one I'm going to sell it for slaughter. So I would check out goats that give birth to, they give birth, but they rarely get milk. I sell them out for slaughter. I don't sell them out to another farmer. Uh, goats that um, <coughs> always have miscarriages, I would sell them, I would send them to the market for slaughter. I would also look for those goats that every time they give birth, they give me small babies. I don't want small babies. And they are, those goats also, when um, during their time of giving birth, most of the time they are sickly, all they took long to go on heat. I would call them off, sell them to the market, and the money I would get out of those sold goats, I would go back in the farms around me, look for good females, I restock again. You are saying, I've sold some, but the money I've not diverted it anywhere, I've brought it back, bought other animals, brought them back to the farm. So at any one given time, I ensured that my productive females should not go below 50 at any one given time. Reason being, every time you have few animals at the farm that are not productive, your cost of production becomes higher. For example, when you go to our drug shops downtown, there is no drug shop where you'll go and they tell you, okay, since you have 50 goats, we are going to give you half a bottle of the drug. No, they will sell you a hundred mils which may cover 50 goats or a hundred. Or if you are paying the same amount of money you are paying for somebody to look after 50 goats, it's the same amount of money I pay somebody looking after a hundred goats. So what stops you from stocking enough goats? So I ensured my numbers, my productive goats should not go below 50. That even if I sold or one died, I make sure I look for money to replace it. Uh, initially, when I was farming goats, I was doing this uh, part time because I had jobs in Kampala. But 2020, when COVID hit and things were so tough in Kampala, I opted for, for the farm. I realized I would save a lot if I stayed at the farm. I also realized that uh, a lot of things happened at the farm while I was away. By that time I started growing matoke and the number of bunches I used to harvest from my matoke. Sometimes they came, they came one, this month there are many, you harvest a lot of bunches and then the following month is just half of the bunches you're harvesting. So I realized there was a very big discrepancy and somebody was taking my share who was part of my team. So I realized if I camped at the farm, I would make a very big difference here at the farm. And 2020, I made a decision to come and I've never looked back. 
So when I reached at the farm, as a full-time farmer, I had a lot of time on my hands. I started doing a number of things. I made a lot of changes. Um, some of them was to separate the herds because they had grown so many. And we, we initially we had one herd and uh, goats would get lost in the fields much as we have a very big land. So I realized there was need for accountability of these animals. So I separated the herds into smaller herds of uh, 150 to 200 goats manned by two people, all one. At the farm, this is what we do also to ensure that our goats grow in number. One of those things we do is uh, natural synchronization. What do we mean by natural synchronization? Most of the people that have tried to explain natural synchronization, they make it appear so hard, like it is not a, 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 a lay farmer cannot do it. No, every farmer can. What do I mean by natural synchronization? This is the time where you plan to have at least 90% of your herd. The female goats become pregnant in the same time frame and then they can be able to give birth in the same time frame. What does this mean to a farmer? If goats give birth in the same time frame, it means you can have kids at that time you can also have a team to specifically devote their time on those kids. Also, to devote all your energies, all the feeds to those kids so that they mature at the same time. Unlike when kids are born at different times, usually the management becomes problematic because they are not born at the same time. For example, if it is a vaccination of babies, if they are few, most farmers become lazy to vaccinate them because they are going to, the vaccine they are going to use is less and then the rest of the, rema the remainder of the vaccine is going to be powered. So for you to ensure that, ensure that all the babies are born in the same time frame in that when you are to bring your vaccine to vaccinate, all the babies are, are covered. So natural synchronization, how is it done? Usually what we do, we select our breeding females, the females without defects, the females that are not sickly, uh, the females are nice looking, they have a very good body score, they are not so thin, they, are, they, have, uh, they have no defects on their udders, those are the animals we prepare and then we ensure they are already vaccinated, we dwarm them, if there are any that are sickly, we give them a few antibiotics. And then after they have recovered and we feel they are, the, they are at their best, we bring our very good males and then we put them there for only 42 days. 42 days. We, are, we calculate that in a, in a day, one male, one mature male will mate, will mate four females. So assuming there are 50 females, within a month all the females are already served. But I'm not saying that all the females will come on heat on the same day. It is hard, uh, but at least within those 42 days, most of the goats are already on heat and they can be served by the male goats at that time. When I settled here at the farm full time, I didn't settle enough because I really felt I wanted my farm to be bigger. I wanted to grow bigger. I wanted to have more and more animals. I wanted to iron out most of the challenges I was facing at the farm. And I never stopped consulting. The farmer watching me never stopped consulting. However big you may be, however small you may be, the knowledge you always get out there it is not always enough and there is always new knowledge all the time. So the consultation, I would visit as many farms as I can, big or small farms. Actually, sometimes when I'm driving from, uh, when, I would dri when I would be driving like from Kampala to the farm and I find nice looking goats or even if they're not so nice looking goats, I would take it upon myself to make a stop and follow up those goats and see where they are going. How is their feeding? How are they herding? 
how are they managing the goats why do they choose that particular breed i would always ask them so consult visit as many farms as you can uh, there's a lot of information on the internet read about it watch about watch all that information on the internet and then collaborate with the information you're getting from other channels like i've told you not all the information you get on the internet is right for you but collaborate collaborate and i always admire farms in south africa so there's a time i traveled to south africa on a learning spree about goats and i learned about goats within 14 days and i was so happy that my mentor gave me all the information i needed and it helped me and i still use that information up to today okay, in my research i would read i would watch I would visit as many farms, but I would also write down. That information that I write down was so helpful to me, and up to now it is still helpful, but it was also helpful to other farmers who are my followers, who have inspired. They would always want this, that information for themselves to be able to build their farms to date. As a, as a budding goat farmer, we didn't anticipate that goats would start, would start dying because we are not vaccinating. Most of us didn't know that goats would be need vaccination. Along the way, I lost a number of goats, especially the babies, the kids, where I lost so many of them. And one of the reasons as to why I lost most of them was due to lack of vaccines to vaccinate those goats. Most of us, when we are starting goat farming, we didn't anticipate that goats are vaccinated. We grew up seeing goats grow on their own without vaccines. But now, goats can never grow in numbers without vaccines. In my, in my early years, what used to happen, we used to have uh, like one supplier of vaccines. And this person would bring these vaccines privately and he would bring... Uh, 500 mils as uh, the doses, 500 mils per bottle. So which means that 500 mils can only cover 500 goats. So for you who has fewer animals, like me who started with 30, I could not be able to vaccinate. So what did I do as Woji Farms? I went uh, downtown, I approached a few drug shops that used to bring vaccines for livestock, but they had never bothered to bring vaccines for goats. I talked to them, I begged them, I told them, please help us and bring vaccines for goats. I will take the role of a marketeer. I will market the vaccines to all farmers out there so that they can start vaccinating the goats. And indeed, most farmers listen to me. There is no single farm you go to, there is no single big farm you go to now where they are not vaccinating. Those vaccines are very, very crucial in the survival and in the growth of your herd. So ensure you vaccinate if you want your animals to grow in numbers and to grow into healthy goats. Goats are living things. Most of, some of them, they are come, they are comes a season. Some of them have minor illnesses like uh, eyes, uh, they have diarrhea. Uh, some of them have uh, they have a cold. We ensured that every morning we do routine treatment. We have our own drug kit where we would treat the animals, but with consultation with a qualified veterinary official. And eventually, we learnt on the job, and we used to do most of these. Uh, minor treatments at our farm would only invite a vet because we are cutting on costs by the way would only invite a vet where things get out of hand for example a goat has failed to give birth uh, for example a goat needs a surgery some of us we fear blood so i would always invite a vet to come and handle but other minor illnesses like uh, handling diarrhea in kids a goat has got an eye infection, those as we could handle ourselves and we still handle up today. Because of the desire to treat our animals at the farm, we had to buy our own drugs that we stock at least every three months in our store. 
you'll check out our store and um, also this stocking of drugs it helps in that that you save a lot of costs there are times when you invite people from outside to come and treat your animals they charge you a lot per bottle they have used but if these people are to come and treat your animals using your own drugs the cost or you are going to pay to them usually lowers uh, since i started with local goats some of the mothers did not have ample milk to feed our babies so what we used to do by then would supplement the babies born usually from one month and a half up to three months we would supplement them with uh, dry grass that is hay would also supplement them with um, by then the parents were not yet there but would buy a little bit of maize bran and we give them in smaller amounts plus water and also would ensure that we get uh, a few supplements that are drinkable we mix them in the water for the babies to have their immunity boosted and also to reduce on the mortality of those babies usually most of the babies die because of starvation they are not getting enough milk from their mothers so how we ensure that was to help them eat something so that they don't starve by the time the mothers come back they are just stopping up from the milk from the mothers lastly something crucial that every farmer should think should think about when you're starting to farm or any other business you cannot do any business in isolation you need partners some of them may be big others are small but you need partners here when i was starting i started sourcing i started sourcing for partner breeders these are farmers i would go to that have identified they have very good uh, breeding females i would bring them at the farm when I was starting, there was this particular lady, she's called Christine, and she's from Zimbabwe. I did not know her, but she knew me because I was all over social media. She contacted me, she needed goods to sell, and I didn't have money. I told her, Christine, please trust me. Can I guy pick your goods? I want to have them. I, ha I want to have half of your herd for myself, and then the other herd, I will sell the goods to the other breeders. So I went and picked the goats on credit. Actually, by that time, I only paid uh, five million, that is roughly $1,200 to her. And I also asked for her bank account. And I told her that every time I make a pay, I, I'm, every time I make a sale, I'll be sending some money every after two weeks or one week. And indeed, she was able to give me 147 goats. I brought them to the farm. And uh, luckily enough, some of those goats came when they were pregnant. So I selected some of the, breed, the goats I, I, I liked and then I sold off the rest. So I was able to pay her up within three months to pay up all her money. And uh, my heart grew because I'd added on the numbers from her farm. She was also left a happy farmer because I paid her on time. Here, what does it mean that you cannot farm in isolation? Or you cannot do business in isolation have partners have good relationships among your neighbors especially those you are doing the same business with don't always be in competition with others the competition is healthy actually for me i don't fear competition because when i started selling breeding goats most farmers also opted to sell breeding goats opting for my exact kind of model and i'm okay with that because Every time the competition is big, it gives you room to scratch your head and become better than your competitors. So here we are as Boji Farms and I hope you have liked the story. Thank you.